are listening to Athleisure Kitchen, where you'll get the inside scoop with those in the culinary world from celebrity chefs, food personalities, restaurateurs, and more. I'm your host, Kimmy Smith of Athleisure Mag, so set an extra plate as we chat all things culinary. On today's Athleisure Kitchen, we head to the studio office of Ron Silver's restaurant, Bubby's, in the Meatpacking District. Bubby's is also located in Tribeca, as well as six outposts in Japan. We find out how Ron created one of the quintessential destinations for brunch with his passion for great food and keeping it simple. We also talk about how his interests and passions in CBD and THC led him to create Izuka, which complements his food, as well as the love for creating art, which you can see in his restaurants, as well as his show in Mexico City. So what was the moment that you realized that you wanted to be a chef? I would say there were multiple moments of Mm -hmm. realizing that I wanted to be a chef. Um, One of the things is that when I was a little kid, I realized that I loved to cook. Mm -hmm. And part of that was because it was mischief (laughs) and, uh, you know, because it was fire and knives. And so, Mm -hmm. you know, I, I take to mischief. Uh, very well Mm -hmm. Um, and then I would say another small thing was that my mother because I was mischievous took my five dollar a week allowance away from me and I went and got a job (laughs) washing dishes wow so that was eighty five dollars a week so that was another realization that Mm -hmm. um, that that was my spot and then I did I washed dishes for a long long time so when did you start washing dishes? When I was 13. Okay. And I washed dishes till I was like, sort of in and out till I was like 21. That is a long time to wash dishes. I really loved it. <laughs> nice. Okay. I did other things in between. I'm assuming, yes. <laughs> um, and then um, I was washing dishes at Alta Ski Resort and I, I wiped out and uh, broke my rib and so I was out for six weeks and I decided during that time that I was going to be a chef. Wow. So I think that's when I really decided to go for it Mm -hmm. when I was 21. Wow. So what were all the places that you went to in terms of like culinary school or different restaurants that you worked for prior to coming up with Bubby's? So I, I, um, I worked for some hotels for a while and then I moved to Atlanta because I, I lived in Salt Lake and there was no good dining there really so I moved to Atlanta and um, worked for the best restaurants in Atlanta and I was offered a scholarship to to the Culinary Institute Mm -hmm. Uh, but I I kind of did a quick uh, cocktail nap in mathematics and realized I could Mm. not afford that scholarship right so I didn't go to school Wow. And, just, uh, and then, you know, I moved to New York when I was about 24, 25, and just sort of worked my way up, and I opened Bubby's when I was 28. So what made you realize that this is what you wanted to open and the type of cuisine that's offered here? Well, so the, the style of cuisine in the 80s was very sort of weird, Nouvelle cuisine, like big plates and small portions and kind of stupid, and I really wanted to just uh, open up a place that had good home cooking and sort of large portions on small plates Mm -hmm. and I really just wanted to cook the food that I like to eat. That's a good answer. Um, So what's the average day like for you being at Bubby's? Well I've been running Bubby's for a long time, uh, 28 years. Mm. Uh, So my average day at Bubby's, you know, I really, I'm sort of very uh, regimented about what I do. I go into Tribeca and have a coffee mm-hmm. and go around and talk to everybody and look around, mm-hmm. sort of see that everything's looking good. And then I come up to Highline and do the same thing. Wow. And then I come up here to my office and, you know, I'm a, I'm a painter. So that's really what I want to do is paint. Wow. Once I know everything's sort of locked down, then I just start painting. Wow. Uh, I'm also in the cannabis business. Well, we were going to get to that too, actually. So you you have the two restaurants here. You have some in Japan as well? Six. Six. Yeah. Um, you know, how do you decide where the next place is going to be for your restaurant and the community that it serves? 
Well, I suppose that the world decides for me because I'm not a business person really. And mm -hmm. so if the, you know, the Japanese people called me up about 10 years ago and I was like, there's no way I'm doing that. Mm -hmm. And we were having lunch the next day and wow. I was walking around the space like a week later. Wow. And so I, I don't really make a plan. It just sort of happened. <laughs> Do you think you'll ever create something like another restaurant that's not under like the Bubby system and maybe something different? That's a good question. I don't have a lot of reason to do that. Mm -hmm. um, and at the same time, I do come up with ideas that I think are interesting sometimes. So I think the jury is out on that. Nice. So we were at the specialty food show um, the past two days and we saw Azuka and I know you launched it last year. Can you tell me more about, you know, why are you in the cannabis space and, and why did you want to create this product? So, you know, I've been in the cannabis space since I started washing dishes, really. So, I mean, I've smoked weed since I was a kid <laughs> and like everybody mm -hmm. in the kitchen does. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think what really inspired me to get into this business is that I felt that I had something to offer it mm -hmm. uh, and really uh, you know maybe six years ago I discovered that there was a very large problem which is how cannabis edibles deliver mm -hmm. and so I really set out to solve that problem mm -hmm. right from the start mm -hmm. and uh, and I was able to make really good progress with that so it was sort of it's sort of in a way, it fell in my lap, but I did do a ton of research. Wow, wow. So, you, um, what did you initially launch, and then are there new launches for this year? Well, so what we have is a technology, really. Okay. Azuka is a uh, cannabinoid edibles technology. Mm. And uh, what that means is that it allows edibles to be consumed in an understandable way, mm -hmm. which is helpful for people who want to take cannabis mm -hmm. or CBD mm -hmm. or uh, also for people who want to make edibles. Mm. So we're very much uh, in the business of helping people understand cannabis edibles. Mm -hmm. Wow. So what are your plans for that, you know, looking at the rest of this year and going into next year? Well, we are working, uh, we're working with um, some of the biggest cannabis edibles companies in the country, uh, and we're just getting started with those guys. Wow. Uh, we are selling uh, CBD edibles, uh, like our Az Azuka sugar packs mm -hmm. will be available online mm. and in stores soon. Uh, we have THC edibles in Massachusetts with a, a partner up there, and uh, we are also talking to people in in uh, other countries about uh, CBD wow. stuff. That's so, very cool. Yeah, and you're also a painter. So, how long have you been painting, and what is it about that that just draws you to that form of creativity? Uh, well, I've really I've always been an artist, and I started Bubby so that I could make art mm -hmm. uh, and I can't really answer what draws me to it I what draws me to it is that if I don't do it I, I get very crappy so how many paintings do you create a day basically I mean it depends uh, you I'm know, seeing a lot <laughs> a lot of artwork which uh, is I always work I'm always working on something mm -hmm. and at the moment I'm painting on paper so that's a little bit quicker than oil paint mm -hmm. but then I'm I love the draft Thank you. Uh, so then I'm, uh, all these paper things will be mounted on on fabric. So then that's going to be a big job. Wow. So, I mean, I guess it, I, I mean, I, I can paint a bunch of things, but then it's going to take months to get them mounted. Will you ever do or have you ever done a gallery or? I have a show in Mexico City in August. Wow, First that's one. exciting. Yeah. So how, how many pieces are showing? Are you nervous? <clears throat> uh, I have 40 pieces showing and I am nervous. Yeah. It's <laughs> my first show. Well, yeah, that's fantastic. Oh, my gosh. Um, so what are three signature dishes in Bubby's that we should know about that if people have yet to come, that's what they should be eating? Well, the fried chicken and pancakes. That is a thing to eat. And we have really good watermelon lemonade. Hmm. That's a thing to drink. Mm -hmm. uh, and let's see. What is the thing you must eat? Biscuits, biscuits. Oh, the biscuits. I love the biscuits. 
<laughs> He's like, yes. Great. Yeah, the burgers. There you go. Okay. Well, so when you're not painting and, and you're not focused on Azuka and Bubbies, what are three things that we could find you doing just in terms of relaxing and, you know, getting your athleisure on? Smoking bong hits. <laughs> Reading. Nice. I have three. I have four kids. I mind after those guys sometimes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> well, do you have any philanthropic efforts that you do that you know we can know about or? We. I mean, Bubby's does a lot of philanthropy mm-hmm. uh, in that we. You know, I mean, we give stuff to people all the time. We support different organizations like the uh, um, New York City. To, oh, what is that place called? I don't know. So the the oldest shelter, men's shelter in America. Mm. Wow. Uh, and New York City Mission Rescue Mission, and Azuka will have a huge amount of social mm-hmm. stuff to do um, because the cannabis business is very very ripe for a lot of opportunities mm-hmm. for a lot of different people who really deserve them mm-hmm. and don't often have them. And so we're very uh, focused on how we're how we are going to sort of set our company up. So it's really mm-hmm. um, in- incorporating the the social aspects of things that we need, especially you know just the war on drugs has been particularly hard on you know on brown people, mm-hmm. and so we are very much focused on making sure to to stay aware of creating opportunities Mm -hmm. almost in an artificial way Mm -hmm. Uh, but not in not in I I mean we're getting a lot of help with thinking about that but I think it's a very big deal Uh, to me that's the biggest deal right Um, and just in setting up our company you know it's really run by women and Mm -hmm. they're very uh, the the, my uh, CEO Mm -hmm. is Everybody in Azuka has deep moral compass mm-hmm. and ethics, and so I think the jury's out on how we're going to be able to be helpful in not just a philanthropic way, but in a sort of responsible and actual opportunity mm-hmm. creating way, more than just philanthropy, which is I, I think philanthropy is great, mm-hmm. but I think it's, it's a lot it's a lot of challenge to create actual opportunity and I think we're very much focused on that wow so my final question is what legacy do you love to leave behind with all of the fingerprints you've put on so many different areas well that is <laughs> that is a tough question I mean I hope I I hope I leave behind something that my kids are proud of mm-hmm. yes and uh Something that continues to do good work mm-hmm. after I'm gone. Nice. And uh, maybe I hope to leave behind a bunch of beautiful stuff. We can't wait to sit with you again to share another great story with you at Athleisure Kitchen. Athleisure Kitchen is a part of Athleisure Studio, our multimedia podcast network, which is a division of Athleisure Media and whose sister site is Athleisure Math. Get the latest episode by listening, following, and leaving a review on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts, Stitcher Premium, Himalaya, or your preferred podcast platform. Find out additional information by checking out the show notes. You can stay in the loop on who future guests are by visiting us at athleisurestudio.com backslash athleisure kitchen and on Instagram at athleisure kitchen and at athleisure studio. I'm your host, Kimmy Smith. Athleisure Kitchen is executive produced by Paul Farkas and myself and is mixed by the team at Athleisure Studio. We'll be back with another episode, so make sure that you set an extra plate for us. 